the climate crisis is deepening. And to avert it, our lifestyles have to change. Greater Manchester thinks it holds the key to solving some of the challenges to reduce the UK's carbon emissions. Today, we discover the technology and meet the people who are cutting carbon and taking the region towards carbon neutrality by 2038. We'll uncover the everyday items you may no longer see in years to come and the green alternatives that could replace them. Join us and our discovery of future relics. So people sometimes describe Manchester as being the first industrial city, um, and we can quite legitimately say that we were the people that kick-started the Industrial Revolution. And that's essentially when global carbon emissions started to escalate incredibly. And during that process, we were riding the wave of a huge number of innovations, steam, coal, cotton, textiles, and then computing, modern chemistry. But the legacy of all of that is that we had a huge part to play in the global industrialization that's led to the climate crisis. And that means two things. First of all, we've got skin in this game. We actually helped to create this problem. We have a huge moral responsibility to help fix it. But the second thing that's really important is that we've got a history of innovation that we can use and deploy to make sure that we bring to the world, not just for ourselves, the kind of solutions we need to defeat the climate crisis. Our story begins with seemingly everyday objects, things we all use and heavily rely on, but will soon be disappearing from our daily lives. In the 1940s, most homes were heated by coal, either open fires or through furnace systems. Probably from the late 1940s onwards, after a series of coal strikes, the country moved towards a more secure form of supply, which was in natural gas, again, another fossil fuel. And the UK, and Manchester in particular, has been on gas ever since. Domestic heating is the single biggest source of CO2 emissions next to transport, so it's vitally important that we decarbonise heating in homes as soon as possible so that we can meet our 2038 city region target. But 80% of the buildings that will be here in 50 years time are here now, so actually the biggest challenge is about retrofitting heating technologies, and that's where we see a significant role for hydrogen in replacement of natural gas. Hydrogen is used at the moment and produced in the UK and it's mainly used for industrial purposes but if you produce it in a low carbon way it can be used in your homes along with a hydrogen ready boiler as a, as a low carbon heating technology. Hydrogen plays a really key role in delivering net zero because a large proportions of the UK's carbon emissions come from people heating their homes. So we can't use natural gas in the future because it's a fossil fuel. So we have to look for alternatives and one alternative is hydrogen. In 2021, we introduced the Retrofit Task Force, which is retrofitting thousands of homes in Manchester, providing insulation, the installation of heat pumps in homes, more efficient energy systems, renewable energy, etc. Caden is replacing its infrastructure, its pipes in the ground, with plastic ones in order to make the network hydrogen ready. And it's also really important that we play a significant role in helping people understand the role that hydrogen could play in the decarbonisation of heating in the future. So we're getting ready for that and ensuring that we've got the skills in the business to make that happen. The growth company is supporting thousands of businesses in and around Manchester with business support services, skills for growth, IP support, investment support, and it's also one of the eight founding partners of the Energy Innovation Agency. It's a really exciting time for investors to get involved in Manchester and the work we're doing here because we have a very collaborative approach to solving the issue of climate change here in Manchester. There are a lot of groups already working together and we have a lot of world firsts here, not least of all with the invention of graphene. We really need simple, innovative solutions that bring people together and improve people's lives. So Greater Manchester, with its target of 2038, 12 years ahead of the rest of the UK, if it achieves that, it will drive competitive advantage for Greater Manchester, for the region, for companies, 
but also to pull through some of the science and technology from universities like the University of Manchester. Today, concrete probably contributes between 8 and 10% of global carbon dioxide production. Now, if that was a country, it would probably be the third largest country in terms of emissions of CO2, nearly as big as China and America alone. So if we could reduce the amount of concrete, we could reduce the amount of CO2 emissions. Across Manchester, we have a great capability in advanced materials, of which graphene is one of those areas. We're really seeing how we can exploit that advanced materials capability to really see how we decarbonise everything from concrete through to transport, through to our energy sources in the future. We're working with a local partner where we're looking to take that graphene into cement to reduce the amount of cement in construction using concretine, a graphene enhanced concrete. So concretine and the work we've done at the University of Manchester with our partners is the world's first engineered block of a concrete solution using less cement, less concrete, less water, up to 30% reduction. Through the addition of a very, very small amount of graphene, we can improve the strength of the concrete so we can effectively use less concrete for the same performance. The concretine product cures within 12 hours compared to 28 days. The road we did outside the Geek building, normally that would have been three cement mixers turning up to pour the concrete. Because it was 30% thinner, we only needed two mixers rather than three. So immediately that's less transport on the road, less emissions. So here we're seeing an example where we have sustainability without compromising in terms of cost or performance. In Manchester, we recognise that we need to construct sustainably because of the impact of carbon on our environment globally. So I'd like to introduce the Mayfield development. This is 26 acres of prime real estate within the city centre of Manchester. As a regeneration project, it is going to be transformed into 1,600 homes, about 2 million square feet of mixed-use retail, commercial and food and beverage. And at the heart of it is a new green lung for the city, which is a six and a half acre park, complemented by another five acres of public realm. What that creates is a new district for the city, and it creates a, an environment and a place for people to live, work, play, and it's part of the whole model of, of how we could potentially live in the future. We are supporting the use of graphene enhanced concrete on site, and we hope and will achieve nearly 30% reduction in embedded carbon for the concrete structures we use on site. It's totally fitting that we should, as a city, lead and show the way to being carbon net zero for the future prosperity of the city, the people that live here, and our place in the global market. Just as Greater Manchester adapted and grew its public transport and road network in the Industrial Revolution 200 years ago, we're now looking at how we can bring that up to modern day standards and make it fit for purpose for modern day life. So everything that we can do now to enable people to choose to leave their cars behind, to choose to take more active means of transport and to choose to build activity back into their days is the innovation that we need to see Greater Manchester continue to lead the way in a new and modern era. Greater Manchester's ambition is to be the UK's leading green city region. So we're the first city region to set a science-based target for net zero, 2038. And what we are saying to the government is, in the next few years, we can accelerate and remove a million tonnes of carbon from Greater Manchester's economy. I think it's incredibly important that we decarbonise our transport systems. I mean, all in all, it makes up such a significant portion of the UK's emissions. I think it's in the order of 30%. And so clearly, if we're going to decarbonise our economy, decarbonise our country, then having a significant focus on transport is going to make all the difference. So for Siemens, we work across the whole plethora of transport systems. In terms of innovation, we're actually into deployment. If you look at the kind of infrastructure that you see, that we're involved in things like you know, lamp post charging um, that makes it easier for people to charge vehicles if they don't have a driveway. So when we talk about electric vehicles, we do tend to think about cars, but actually if you think about bus fleets, these are very significant areas where we can decarbonise. 
vehicle journeys generate the most carbon emissions of all the journeys that we make and internal combustion engines are obviously doing over 90% of those carbon emissions. The government have set the target that no new petrol or diesel vehicles will be sold from 2030 so it's absolutely vital that people can get around using an integrated public transport system with walking and cycling routes that comprehensively cover the whole region. Over the next five years people will see transport change before their eyes in Greater Manchester. We are about to undergo a major transport revolution as we create what we call the B Network. The Greater Manchester B Network is an integrated public transport system alongside 1,800 miles of walking and cycling routes across the city region. Included within that are 2,400 crossings to enable people to travel on foot or by bike along connected routes safely. The vision is to change the way our buses work so that effectively we create one system out of bus and tram where it all runs on green energy. Zero emission at street level, hugely cutting the pollution and the noise that communities experience. A vision for a modern public transport system that I believe will put Greater Manchester on the UK and the global map. As well as the climate change benefits of decarbonisation, there is a significant societal opportunity. It creates new jobs. If we're at the forefront of how we take advantage of this decarbonisation activity, then that puts us in a great position. If we invest in the right way, then we don't only decarbonise that transport, but we make better networks. Heat is a kind of highly absorbent organic matter. A bit like plants have been laid down to form coal over time. It can be used for energy production, so that might be people cooking in their homes or heating in fires in order to heat their houses. But then also we found that it's really good as a kind of organic matter to put into composts and soils to help plants grow. The state of the peatlands across Lancashire, Manchester and North Merseyside is devastated. They've been absolutely devastated over the last 100, 200 years. We're down to about 2% of the peat we had. The consequences of peat extraction basically mean that it's not sucking in carbon, it's not storing that carbon, and it's actually literally pumping out greenhouse gases. We've got problems with smaller fires because it's too dry. Because it's so dry, it becomes quite hard. So when it rains, we get problems with flooding. Then people will lose income because areas that uh, aren't managed properly mean that people's jobs are at risk as well. The amazing thing about peatlands is how much they can trap carbon from the air. Peat is the superhero of the natural world. They're basically helping to save the planet, but they're also important for biodiversity because there are some quite rare types of animals and, and plants that actually live only on peatlands. As long as it's properly maintained and it's in the right condition, it will contain carbon for thousands and thousands of years, millennia, and it captures much more carbon, probably three times as much carbon as forests across the world. There are kind of two ways that people are trying to help. One is to reduce the amount of peat that we're using. The other thing is to look at the peatlands around Manchester and to try and take them back to a kind of healthier state. The 2% of peat that's left won't be destroyed because we've stopped peat extraction. That peat should remain and be restored by the Wildlife Trust because there's so little of the peat left, but it's ours now to actually protect. For the people of Greater Manchester, in your your day to day, you might not be thinking too much about the peatlands that are surrounding us. But then, quietly, these peatlands are also there in the background, really doing some hard work for us as citizens of Manchester, helping to deal with excess rainwater. They are taking carbon dioxide out of the air, and so even though they are quietly going on being sort of plant and uh, animal habitats in the background, they are absolutely critical for the health of the city. We want people to see the work we're doing. We want people to invest in these fantastic peatlands and understand why they're so important for biodiversity, but why they're so important for carbon capture, why they're so important for the planet, and why they're so important for their own health to actually visit these places.
Gel Phonics is a collaborative project between AEH Innovative Hydrogel and Graphene Engineering and Innovation Center. The aim of this project is basically to produce a sustainable growing medium that will help growers to replace the unsustainable materials such as peat, rock wool and coir. What differentiates gel ponic from other growing medium is a miniature graphene based sensor. Plants need different types of nutrient at different growth stage. This graphene based sensor will tell us if there is any deficiency in nutrient and it will enable growers to take right decision at right time to make sure that they have higher yield. So when I started this company, it was just a one-person company. And because of support from Greater Manchester, now we are going to set up world first manufacturing facility in Greater Manchester. And from there, we will supply sustainable and environment-friendly substrate all around the world and will decarbonize not only Manchester, but the world. Manchester is a great place to come and test new ideas as well in this space and that's for a number of reasons. Collaboration runs through our veins, so forming partnerships with companies that want to test new products, new ideas, new services is exactly what we're here to do. You know, we're expecting over £63 billion worth of investment which overall creates £100 billion worth of economic impact and over 200,000 new jobs created from that. So we have to be ambitious to be able to, to have that status and we want to be a trailblazer that then other places, other cities and towns can learn from as well and hopefully by going first we get the innovation here, we get the technology here and the investment here and then that can be exported to other places both in the UK but also the rest of the world. Over 50% of Greater Manchester's land area is green space and we can do more with it, plant more trees, nurture more peat bogs, create more green spaces for people to play and enjoy uh, and actually make nature part of our solution. There's a huge opportunity here to bring on the new more quickly. Manchester is famous for having done that down the decades and down the centuries. A city region that's always been modern in its thinking, always been willing to bring on the new more quickly and it's my view that if we become the early adopter in the UK of green technology and giving our residents green skills, we will be setting this place up for the future and we will be bringing new prosperity to Greater Manchester. To find out more about the stories you've heard, visit greenergreatermanchester.com.